Welcome, everybody. This is Let's Develop with Chris Woolley. Um, we've got our special guest today, uh, Woody Walters. We're going to be looking at creative brushwork inside of Photoshop. Um, so if this is your first time watching, uh, we've got Let's Develop, where every other week, so um, twice a month, we bring in an expert in the photography industry and we put on an hour-long webinar and basically we just have a really good time learn some new techniques get some skills going on uh and just kind of have fun with it uh so this is really really cool and i do have to do a huge shout out to american color imaging uh, they're the guys that are like hey we want to be behind this we want to support this we want to embrace our community and that's exactly what they're doing. So thank you, ACI, for um, helping make this happen and being so supportive of our industry. Um, hey Chris, I'm going to interrupt you there just for a second. You know, I've been working with ACI when I was a first year student in photography school in 1978. And to this day, I, I still use ACI, Mark Lang, Lisa, we, we just want to thank you for all that you do for the photographers and not only in our state, but really, you know, nationally. And, and we just tip our hats off to you and just say, wow, uh, we greatly appreciate your support and all that you do for photography. Very true. <laughs> Very true. Uh, so if you have missed the last two episodes, because this is officially episode number three now. Um, so if you've missed the last two episodes, um, last one we had on was Lindsay Bowler. Uh, that is now live, the replay up on ACI's website. So you can go to acilab.com slash let's dash develop. Um, or you can click on the uh, resources tab and hit let's develop and down at the very bottom there's the replay so we've got uh, lindsay's episode uh, from a couple of weeks ago and gary box's episode where we're talking about marketing for photographers um, so you can catch the replays on those along with the show notes uh, so make sure that we're checking that out um, this is also uh, a uh, webinar format, which means that uh, you get to see us talking, but we can't hear you talking. So if you do have questions at all, um, there's a little question section in the top right. Um, it's got like a chat icon with a little question that's on it. Um, so if you hit uh, that one and type in your question, we can read it. You can vote on questions that you want the answer to. At the very end of the program today, we are going to be going live answering all of your questions. Um, so make sure that you're um, checking that out and typing the questions in there. If it's just a casual comment that you're typing, feel free to put it into chat. Uh, but it is important that we do keep questions um, in the question section so we can keep track of them and don't miss them. Um, also want to remind you that you do want to stay until the end today. It's only an hour that we're here together, but ACI does have some prizes for us uh, to give away, which are always fun to do. Um, and we've got some specials from Digital Photo Candy as well as ACI. Uh, so we can get those and that'll be available uh, towards the end of our section or our, our program today. Um, so make sure that you're hanging out so that we don't miss those. Okay. So now we can go ahead and jump into the content because I know this is what everybody is waiting for. Uh, we've got Woody Walters here today. And Woody is, besides a good friend, uh, a legend in the industry. Uh, when it comes to Photoshop brushes and creative brush work, uh, Woody is the grandfather of that all. He came up with these unique things that nobody's ever seen before. And he figured out how to get them in photographers' hands so they can start creating artwork uh, and that's just one thing that Woody does. Like he's a master photographer, craftsman, image excellence, like pretty much any accolade that you can get. Woody's been there. Um, he's got artwork that's in like Ansel Adams private collection, the, the Smithsonian museums galore. Uh, this man is legit. Uh, he also has a uh, Facebook page for free, Learn Photoshop with Woody Walters, where you can join and he posts Photoshop tips, uh, that sort of thing. He's got a uh, virtual store, Digital Photo Candy, where you can get brushes, templates, everything Photoshop that's there. And he's got some private mentorships for Inside Woody's World, the exclusive group, uh, where he can help you through image competition, learning Photoshop, upping your game. I know we've got a bunch of uh, his students inside uh, this presentation today as well. Um, so it's going to be really, really cool. We're going to be learning a ton today. Um, and Woody's going to be guiding us through all of it. So uh, I am very, very excited. So uh, Woody, you want to start us off and uh, kind of let us know what's going on? 
Sure. Chris, hey, I, I, I want to turn this around and thank you. Chris is, again, um, he's not just a friend. He, he's family to me now. And it's just, it, your friendship means a lot. But it's an honor to be here. And what we'd like to do today, you know, I started out doing the fine art black and white. Um, when, when I graduated from college, I remember saying I, I would never shoot color. And then Photoshop came out and, and I was like, OK, I'm going to start shooting color because of all the capabilities and the creative freedom you have in Photoshop. And this was back even before there was layers going on with that. And so, you know, it really opened my eyes and I, I was a what I can call a purist photographer. Um, I did work like Ansel Adams or Minor White or Ed Weston. You know, I simply recorded what was before the lens. Um, but when Photoshop came out and I saw the potential of what could be done by compositing or montaging, I started going in that route. And so I kind of made a, a name going into compositing. Then I started coming up with ideas on how to do these different types of images and compositing styles. And that left uh, one thing to another that led to one thing or another um, and so on and so forth. And so I've done some pretty complex images. I, I've done a Christ portfolio. I've done many, many sports images. Um, I've helped a lot of photographers with their sports and so on and their senior type of work doing composites for them. I did a one image. I call it my hell image. It has over 6,500 images in it. I believe it's the most, one of the most complex images ever created. It took uh, five and a half years to create this thing. And it's, it's quite, um, a large print <laughs> it's like 16 inches by 12 feet tall and That's so impressive. yeah um so i started doing a lot of this but then I, I saw a marvel movie where it was the guy with the thorns that come out of his claws the wolverine and he was fighting some smoke fog guy and they were doing these powder explosions and this fog guy would disappear and reappear and I remember looking at it, and I was in the movie with my son. I was like, Wyatt, look at that. I was just blown away at the quality that they did this powder that disintegrated. And then when it reappeared, it, it would disintegrate and come to, and it would shape the fog guy. And so I went home, and I started making brushes. And I did, I bought like 50 pounds of baking powder. I had my, at the time, he was like six years old, my son. And he started throwing big bowls in front of a gigantic fashion fan that I have and it would spread out the fog and I had a four foot six Larson softbox with uh, photogenic lights and boom lights coming down and photographing the powder exploding and I started making brushes and that's led me um, to do a couple of techniques that I was thinking of and then that opened up a whole floodgate Chris of different brushes to do I've done fire I've done water I've done fire rain smoke and water got to sound like James Taylor singing that song um, I've done powder, I've done dry ice, I, I've done all these different type of uh, elements that I can create my brushes with. And now I have this big repertoire of all these brushes that I use. And I got to say that I don't care what I'm doing today, 99.9% .9 of my images that I do, I do some type of creative brush work. And so what I'd like to do today is keep it simple. I'm going to keep it K-I-S-S. You know, I'm just going to keep it simple. And I'm going to show you, and with your help, Chris, we're going to show, tell everybody how to load these brushes. We're going to give you a set of brushes to, just to try and to use. But I strongly urge for you to watch it. I'm going to keep it very, very simple. And we're going to do some simple painting brush techniques that I started doing when I was doing seniors. And we were selling illustrations at a very hefty price tag um, and then doing you know large prints and so I came up with these brush techniques and I started saying well I'm just going to do this on speculation and back then I was only doing 40 seniors a year to you know meet the money that I wanted to, to reach and out of 40 out of 40 that we presented all 40 of the images with the painting style sold and you know that was just taking it on speculation and I did that two years. And then the next thing you know, it started to become part of our repertoire that we would offer people for X amount more dollars to do their senior images. So we're going to do some work with that. I'm going to do a sports illustration and then hopefully um, a little girl illustration that you can see how to apply the techniques. And, and we're just going to talk philosophies. And Chris, I'll let you take it from there, bud. 
Yeah, so I'm going to share my screen so that we can all see how to do that. Um, so oh, let me actually uh, hit the button so the screen goes up. <laughs> And that one. Okay, there we are. Uh, so we've got this up here. So Woody's uh, giving to everybody that's here attending the um, student set. Um, so I'm going to walk you through how we can actually get this absolutely free. Um, but if you click over on the little present um, that's on the picture, um, that's got the secret code that we're going to need. So because this is a replay, uh, or the, this image, or this uh, webinar is going to be posted as a replay, and this offer is not available to those that are not watching live, uh, make sure you're doing that because I'm not actually going to tell you what the code word is. You've got to look at that little present uh, button to check it out. Um, but here's what we're looking for is the student set, and I'm going to walk you through how to get it. So um, I'm going to go to the Digital Photo Candy website, and that's just digitalphotocandy.com. And um, I've got the site that's up here. And you'll see it looks something like this. And what I'm going to do is just scroll all the way down to the bottom. And Woody's kind of hid this down here, but there's a little smiley face you can barely see. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that smiley face. And it's going to bring us to this student set. Um, so all you have to do is click that smiley face. It's going to take you to this set. And um, you're going to see the picture of what the, uh, the brush looks like. And what we want to do is hit the Buy It Now button. And uh, when we are hitting that button, it's going to take us to a screen. Oh, and it's thinking right now. There we go. And right up here on the right side of the screen, it's got a spot where you can type in that code. So I want you to type in that code, but it does need to be in all caps. So make sure it's in all caps and then hit apply, and it'll take that price down to zero. And so what? that's how we can get. I know. I know. What? I know. You didn't, you didn't know you're getting everybody $50, did you, Woody? <laughs> it's at the if very, you very type bottom. It caps, type it with your credit card and that will work too. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So that's where we're going to be looking in order to get the uh, the student set. Um, and uh, if you click on the offer, there's also a direct link um, to that. Um, that'll just take you right to that page so you can type in the code. But make sure that you are um, actually typing in the code and that you're looking on it. Uh, if you don't type the code in, then it will charge you the $50. And we don't want you to do that. So make sure that we're putting in that code and then you've got access to it. <laughs> uh, so you have to look where the little present is on the right side, Darlene, um, and you'll be able to see what the, the code is. Um, so it uh, says brushes on it, I believe. So if somebody does want to type it into chat, you're welcome to, uh, to type that in too because uh, the people that are watching the replay can't see our chat as well. But okay, we've got that. And now we know how to start using stuff. So Woody, it's all you. All right, let's get started here. And Chris, do I need to share my screen here? Only if you want to show us how to do stuff in Photoshop. I, I do, I do, I do. Okay, that's, so I'm, that's on the I'm left side it. where it says share your screen. Where it says share your screen, left side. I'm not seeing it. There's like For a little icon time. that has a guy with like some sunglasses on or something. And then right below it is the share screen button. Okay, there we go. All right, I'm sorry about that. So we're going to do share. And then I'm going to. Hopefully we're going to do share entire screen. We got share. Choose what to share. No, oh, you're still on that one. I was like, I'm not seeing it. Can you see it? Nope. I'm clicking on share, buddy. Entire screen. Okay. Uh-oh, we're having some technical difficulties. Yes, we are. I'm going to do cancel. We're going to try it again. We're going to click on share your screen. We're going to go there. We're going to do share. And hey, gonna... there we go. There we go. See it now? Yep, okay. we can see it now. Right. I'm going to so switch good. views so everybody can see you bigger. <laughs> Okay, so right now what I got is I got the soccer player. And people, what I want to show today is I want to keep this very, very simple, like I said. So I've already extracted the people from the background, and I've just pasted them against a white background. And you can use any color background that you want to use. Personally, I recommend that you either use white and black and then let your brushwork bring in the color. And so we're going to start with there. And so the first thing I'm going to do with this guy is I'm going to grab one of my brushes. And so I'm going to grab a brush. And right now I've got a splatter brush. So I'm just going to right click on that. 
And we're going to come over here to this fine art brush. And Chris, can you see the shape of the brush on your screen? We can, yeah. I'm making this full screen, so we can't see your picture, Woody, but uh, we can see your, your Photoshop work screen way better. Okay, that's all. Don't worry about looking at me. I want you to look at, at the Photoshop screen. So next thing I'm going to do, and here, here's a big tip, people. And, you know, when I say well, there's a big tip, this is when, when you need to say, ooh, I need to take a special note here. You want to subtract from the image or mask out from the image using the same type brushes that you're going to be adding to the images. And the reason why I say that, if you look here, this is a fine art brush, but I'm going to subtract masking them out using this same brush to take away from. And right now I'm just going to make a mask and I'm going to set it to black over here with my swatches. I'm going to set my opacity and flow rate to 100%. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to take out a part of his leg. Now watch this. I'm going to hit it probably twice. Boom, boom. I'm going to hit it three times. Now I'm having to hit it three times even at 100% because this brush is not 100% opacity. And so it's only probably about 60% opacity. So to take away completely from it, I'm having to hit it three times. And you can see the, the mask over here, the black on the mask. Now, the reason why we use the same brush is so when we start adding to this painting the in the backgrounds with this brush, adding paint strokes, it's going to look like it's meant to fit with the part of the image that I'm taking away. So it's going to look like it's meant to go there. And so I'm just going to walk around here with my brush and I'm just going to hit this and take pieces out. And I'm going to change my size. I'm going to press F5 to bring up my brush wheel, or you can go up to view or window and hit brush preview. And you want this wheel here so you can turn it and get the angles that you want to go with the shape and form of his body. And so that's looking pretty good. I'm going to come back over here. We're going to bring it to the left again. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. And I'm just going to add, you know, different types of places to it. And so I'm going to hit one, two, three. And try to lock your hand down so it locks when, when you're doing these so, so it will be razor sharp. Now, you've got this exact brush in, in the set that I gave you. So this is going to be really easy to follow. And you can use any of the sport or, you know, any images that you guys have with the same technique. Don't think that you have to use my exact, uh, you know, don't think you got to use a soccer player. That's not what this is about. And so I'm going in there. That's looking pretty good. We're going to come up to his head. I'm going to use my bracket keys. I'm going to take out a little bit of his head. Usually I leave the head alone because most people want to see, you know, their full head and their full face type of thing. And so that I'll leave alone. I'm just using my bracket keys to turn this. I'm going to go ahead and rotate this more. Boom. And I'm going to come up here. We're going to rotate it back. And I'm get pretty picky on how I want to rotate it. And so I'm going to hit that. Boom, boom, boom. Now, I don't mind taking off the backs, you know, parts of the back parts of the leg, underneath the leg, parts of the shoulder. Because again, I want my paint strokes when I add them to start interacting with the model or with the sports figure that I'm using with. And so we're even going to come up here, boom, boom, boom. And I'm going to hit that. I'm even going to hit part of the ball. So we're going to come up here. And what I'm going to do, and I'm going to cheat right now. And I told myself I wasn't going to do that, but I am going to do it. And we're just going to get the quick selection tool. I'm going to select this ball. And we're going to do just like that. And now I'm going to do control C to copy it. And I'm going to do control paste to paste it. And so now I've got my own ball here. And so that's fine too. And I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to go back to my brush and we're going to rotate it. And I'm still back on the painting mode. I'm going to go to mass mode and we're going to look at the angle. I'm going to spin it this way. We're going to catch a part of his shoulder and his arm. And again, I'm just looking at this. Now, I got to start hurrying because I want to be able to do at least two images for, for you guys. And so now I'm just going to flip that on the Y axis. We're going to come in here. I'm going to bring that down into his arm, make it a little bit smaller. Boom, boom, boom. That's looking pretty good. I'm going to come up here to his arm again. And now we're going to come to that ball. Except for first, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to grab that ball. Now I'm going to fill it with white because I want the ball to be on a separate layer. So we're going to do Alt Delete and fill that. Boom. And that's just there. Or I could hit Delete and that would be just fine too. We're going to delete it. And now I'm going to come up to my ball here and do a mask with it. So I'm going to do Control D. I'm going to go back to my brush. 
And now we're going to take out part of that ball. We're going to take it out there. And I'm going to hit this area right in here to make it come out. And then we're going to hit it here. Boom, boom. And so that's looking real good. And I'm really happy with that. Now watch so, this. Woody, so, yes. Woody, when you're masking it out, what is it you're, you're going for? What's the important areas that you want to make sure you're masking? Or the important areas you want to make sure you're not masking? Really, I start, I, I try to get rid of some of the edges. It can be on the back side uh, of the person or the front side. Right here, you can see it's on the front of the leg. And I go to my pointer. Right here, it's on the back of the leg. So I'm trying to blend it on the edges so when I start adding paint strokes, which I'm getting ready to do right now, it will start bleeding into what's here. Now, people, this is another little secret that I do in mine. I'm right now going to create four new layers. And Chris, that, I will answer your question more in depth as we go along. All right. Uh, I start at the very bottom uh, of the layer, and I'm going to pick a color. So I'm going to grab my brush, and you can see that I have that same brush. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to click on that blue. And when I see that blue, I want to make it a little bit brighter. Now, notice two things. A, I am selecting colors that are in my model. So right now I'm going to use brown, I'm going to use blue, and I'm going to use yellow. And so now I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger. And I'm going to use that angle that's on here. Now, this is pretty cool. And I'm using that blue. I'm going to keep my brush at an angle which also, you know, represents speed, power, action. You know, I don't want it going straight, straight up and down. I want it on an angle so it represents all that. And I'm going to hit this. Boom. We're going to hit it twice. Boom. And so I got that going in. So now you can see where that paint is bleeding through his legs, his arm, his back, his, his butt. Um, it's not coming up in here. So now I'm going to grab a brown. And I'm going to flip that. And I'm going to come up into here. Now, I want a little bit more of a golden brown, so I'm going to bring it back right in here. Boom. That's looking pretty good. I'm even going to go a little richer. Boom. And now I'm going to unflip this. Boom. And we're going to rotate this. And we're going to go right about here. I'm going to bring that back on an angle just a little bit. I'm almost creating like a double X. Now, I don't want to do the same size. So I'm going to come up over here and hit that. Boom. Boom. Look at that. And you can already start to feel the speed, the power, and everything else that's going into here. And I did something wrong. I did the worst thing I could possibly do. And Chris, you need to reach through the lines and slap me. Each paint stroke gets its own layer. That's why I did four layers here. So I'm going to come up to a new layer, and I'm going to hit that again. Boom. Boom. And so each paint stroke gets its own layer, and that way I can control them each individually. You know, I can say, woo, I like this going back behind his head, or woo, I like it down here. To be honest with you, I do like it coming out behind his head. That's looking way cool. And so that's just using one brush to mask away with, and then I've used two brush strokes to add. And now I'm just going to right-click, and I'm going to grab its sister brush next to her, which is another fine art brush. I'm going to bring that over here. We're going to flip that with the X, and that's looking pretty cool. I'm going to come over here to my swatches. And I'm going to click on yellow. And this one I want pretty bright. And so I'm going to come up here to the purest yellow. And I'm going to hit that. Boom. And I'm going to say, okay. So now I'm going to come to a new layer. And I'm going to look at the angle of this. I'm going to say, yeah, I really, really like that. Let's hit it. Boom. Oh, I'm getting a little bit strong. I'm going to undo that. So we're going to come back down. I'm going to make that a little bit smaller. And I'm going to come over here and hit it. Boom. Boom. And now it's bleeding through. Now I might even rotate that. Bring that down a little bit in here. Good. I like it where it starts breaking. Ooh, that looks out. cool. There. That looks way cool. And so now I'm going to take my ball. I'm going to make a copy of it. Control J. And now, <coughs> excuse me. I'm going to paint a little bit on that. I'm going to switch to a comma. And we're going to go right in there. And I'm going to turn the top layer off so I can see it. And so we're going to come down to that bottom layer. I'm going to switch it in here and hold the command key down. And I'm just going to paint some yellow up in here. I'm going to paint some blue. And I'm going to grab the same blue right down in here. We're going to go right there. And I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to deselect it, control D. And now I'm going to do filter. I'm going to do blur. And I'm going to do motion blur. Boom. And I already picked the angle for it. That's pretty good. But I'm going to make it come a little bit more further down. You can see it rotating. Good. I'm going to say, okay, 
And now I'm going to turn on that top layer. I'm still in that bottom layer and I grab my move tool and just bring that down a little bit just so we get some action coming off of his foot. You know, um, when I was younger, I used to do karate. So I'm still doing all those movements, but I can't do it anymore because I'm too damn old. And so <laughs> I, I just do the snaps here. Now, one more thing I'm going to do. Now, look, check this out, people. We used one brush to mask away. We've used the same brush to do the blue and the brown, and then we switch to a third brush to do the yellow, and then I did a simple blurring technique. Now I'm going to do an adjustment mask. We're going to hit that. We're going to do hue and saturation, and this is signature for me. If I'm doing painting, there's nothing I love more. Okay, back up. You see all these photographers, and you know this has been true from when painting first came into Photoshop, and it's true to till today. You know, you can use Corel paint, you can do oil paintings, you can do water paintings and all that. And I love it. There's great techniques that can be done with them. I'm not putting those down in any shape, way, or form. What I love is having the realism of photography, but having a painting illustrated look, but still keeping that feel of true photography. And so what I'll do to achieve that is to start kicking up this saturation. And it just gives it that illustrative look to it. And I just really, really like it. So it's pretty cool to do that. And so we're right there with this. And now just for the hay of it, I'm going to come up to my fourth layer. I'm going to grab my marquee tool. And I'm just going to make a little frame around this. And so we're going to bring that there. And I'm going to bring it to about right there. And I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. No, we're going to go about right there. That's looking pretty cool. And we're going to go right there. And now I'm going to do edit. And now I'm going to do stroke. And we're going to stroke that. We're going to stroke it with two. We're going to say, okay. Now I'm going to do control D. And now I've got all of that bleeding off. I'm going to create a mask for it. Now here's my brush. And I'm already in my circular brush. And now wherever it's painted at, I'm going to come over here and erase it. So we get that feel that the painting outside of the box where his feet are coming over beyond the box, where his hand is splitting that. And it just adds some really cool move to or you know feeling to that and so you know chris there you go and I, I spent a little bit more time in what i wanted to explaining everything if i didn't have to explain this i could do this image and probably in about two and a half three minutes realistically and well, i appreciate you explaining it it's nice to understand why you're doing what you're doing <laughs> right exactly but my point is is once you get you using the style and doing these paintings it, you're going to be able to do it, it very, very rapidly. And so, you know, what senior would not want an, an, an image like this? And when I present my images, I always do projections. So, you know, I project these. I, I have a program that allows me to project them the actual image size that I want. And so the least I will sh show this at is like a 20 by 24 or bigger. And so, you know, I'm not given the kids too much of a choice of what size print they're going to buy my illustrations at. I'm going to determine that for them. And so that's what I will show them. And so if I put the time and effort to create a piece of art, I want to be paid accordingly for that. And so I strongly recommend that you do the same, but what senior, you know, see this. And it's really cool because when I present my images with my seniors, when I used to, I would come out and I would show the little blue rectangle. Then I'd show the blue paint swab. Then I'd show the brown. And then I'd show the yellow. And then I would dissolve in the, the soccer player and the, with the ball and so on. And you could just see them melting, looking at the image. And, and the kid just going, God, I love this. You know, and, and it's a good way to make sales. It's a good way to make sales. But it's again, all about that it, impact, huh? Yeah. And that, I'm glad you said that because once that's what I never let my images go out on the net when, when I was selling. You want to have that initial impact in your studio, in your, you know, viewing room where they're going to purchase it right then and there. Once they see it, if they see it on, on the web before, you know, they buy it, you are going to lose at least 50% of your sales. And that, that's that's being way too generous. You're probably going to lose about 75, 80% of your sales. So don't show your images until you have them there in your viewing room to sell them. That That's critical to do. And Chris, you know, I'm you with agree? you on that one. Yeah. No, yeah. That, if you're doing in-person sales, like that's definitely advantage and you're just robbing yourself. If you're going to try to uh, post them or give them a sneak peek, we're excited and we want to showcase them because the world needs to see them. But Man, you want to do that uh, so that you can actually start getting that impact and they're purchasing when they've got an emotional connection to it. Uh, and strike while the iron's hot. 
Exactly right. You know, print competition has been all this week for PPFA. And I know one of my hardest things for me not to do because I'm like a damn little kid. When I create a new image, I'm like, oh, 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 look at me. Look at me. Let me show you. Let me show you. You want to see my images? Please, 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 please. Come here. You know, I feel like that dog on, on up, you know, please be my prisoner. Um, I just want to show people and share, you know, my images with people. And so, Chris, you even are like, what do you take that down for Facebook? You know, judges are going to see it. They're going to disqualify themselves. And so, yeah, it's very hard for me. But, yeah, I like to share. But it's the same thing. Don't put your competition prints out on Facebook for, for the judges to see them. It's going to just take away from your scores. Don't kill your scores. Don't kill your pocketbook. You know, make the right. sale. They're in your viewing room, period. period. Show us another one, Woody. Show us another one. Yeah. All right, all right. We're gonna do this little girl. Now I have not done anything with this little girl. This is the first time I'm playing with it. And so I've extracted it from her. And the first thing I'm gonna do is say, yeah, I like that, but I don't like the size. So I'm gonna do image, I'm gonna do canvas size. We're gonna change this to inches just because I'm a photographer. And we're gonna do 14.1. And so I'm gonna do 14.1 and I'm not worried about the 87. So I just wanna go square and now I'm gonna fill that with white. And so we're going to alt delete. Now, another one of your brushes that you, you guys have is uh, you got some powder brushes. So I'm going to try to use some of the brushes that you already have. So here's, again, that same brush that we just used. I'm going to come up here and make a mask. And again, this is in your collection. I'm going to spin that a little bit. And we're going to hit this right in here. Now, here I want to take out a lot because I've got some straight lines in there where it was came from. And so that's looking pretty cool. I'm going to rotate that back over here. We're going to come in here. Boom, boom. And I'm going to let that fall. This we're going to wipe out completely. I'm going to wipe out the back of that chair. So we get that going in. And now I want to go into some powder brushes. Oh, so, I love the powder. Oh, I, I tell you what, Chris, I've used the powder brushes in so many different ways. Um, between Wait. adding fog or skies or anything else, it's just it's so unique to do and it gives such a nice transition too. Well, and you uh, got your signature powder one, the Harley. Yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. <laughs> I did call it the Harley. Yeah. yeah. Well, I call it the Harley brush because when I first made it in doing my powder brushes, I used it in almost every one of my illustrations of my seniors. And so that one brush bought me my first Harley that I ever had. And when I was making the brushes, I was like, I'm going to call this my Harley brush. That's all there is to it. And yeah, it's still my favorite powder brush um, to this day. And I've got explosive powders. I got quite a few powder brushes, but that one's by far one of my favorites. And again, I still use it quite a bit. So I'm just going to come up here and I'm just going to fade out that hair a little bit. We're going to come over here to this arm. I'm just going to fade out that arm. I'm even going to fade it out here in the middle. I'm going to look up there. And I'm just going to come over here. I'm going to grab something else. I'm going to grab something a little bit more. This is, believe it or not, a powder brush, in, but it's very harsh. And so, yeah, I'm going to use that a little bit. We're going to come up over here. Boom. And we're going to bring that down. Now, I don't like that hair coming in right here because it's too strong. I'm going to come in a little bit on top of her head. Now, we're going to play with this. Now, you guys can already see what color am I going to use on the background for this? You know, start they asking. Can't answer. So, yeah. <laughs> Let's see if anybody was paying attention. Type it in the comments. Yeah. What he's talking to you. What All colors right. are you going to use? What colors am I going to I'm going to use three different colors here. What are they? Now we got red coming through so far. Dempsey and Marla. That's very good. What Skin else? Tones. Very good. Gold, blue, tan, brown. Hang on. Where are you getting the gold, blue, tan, and brown? Well, I, I can we see some gold in like the, uh, the headband that's up there a little bit. Yeah, we got some gold right in here. We got blue we got in the eyes. Nice we got this nice brown. So you guys have already hit. I could even use these black or this dark brown hair. I'm not going to do that because it's going to be too strong. Or at least right now, I'm not going to. Let's do do it. Okay, I'm going to break my own damn rules. I'm going <laughs> to grab my brush. I'm going to grab a new layer wow okay you guys are, are putting you know, me we're getting lots of votes for those blue eyes no don't worry you're gonna have some blue eyes now. all right as long as it's not a black right. guy i got my harley brush and there it is right there and i'm gonna flip it over here boom 
and I'm going to grab this dart. And we're going to go about right there. It's really a kind of a gray. And I'm going to bring that up, and we're going to fit this right in here. And I'm just going to hit that. Boom. 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 And I'm going to hit that about three times. I'm going to bring that to the bottom because that's a darker one. Now I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to hit that blue, but I'm going to cheat. And I cheat a lot. I will take my colors from her. And so I'm going to come in here, and really this is almost like a grayish. And you can see it there. But I'm going to play off of that. And if I play off of it, I'm going to come down here more to this blue. I don't mind the aqua. I'm going to keep it more into that blue. And I'm going to hit it about right in here. We're going to go right in there. Now I'm using the same Harley brush. I'm going to be right here. And all I'm going to do is flip it on X. And I'm going to make it a lot bigger. And so now we're on that next layer. I'm going to come in here. Boom. That's pretty good. I'm going to make a copy of that layer. And this is something else you can do. I like if that you don't blue. want to hit it twice or if you get like me where you shake a little bit. And so I hit it with a second layer and then just do control E. And now I'm going to do control T. And I'm going to size that down just a little bit. We're going to rotate it here. That's looking good. This thing's already selling itself. I'm going to make a mask for that. And I'm just going to come up here. We're going to make that a little bit smaller. And I'm just going to hit this so it doesn't have that straight line in there. Just going to faint that a little bit. And that's looking pretty good. Let's go with a red. I'm going to come over here. I'm in a mask. So let's come up here. Let's click on a red. And now I want to grab one of those, that other art, fine art brush. And I just saw it. Where the heck did we go? Right there. We're going to go there. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to flip it on the X. And we're playing with this red. No, I'm not going to flip it. We're going to bring it right in there. And I'm going to hit it with that red. And this is almost like the pink of her lips, the way that I got the mask out of this. So I'm going to hit that. Boom. Boom. And we're going to take that. We're going to size it. I'm going to bring that down. Let it play in between her. And look at that. Look at that. Let's go up to the top. Let's create an adjustment mask. Let's do hue and saturation. Bring that over. We're just going to bring that up. Now, this is pretty cool because that red's getting way strong. Now, I like it there, but I'm going to mute that. And this is another reason that I use an adjustment mask. And Chris, I, th I think you taught me this little trick. But I'm going to come over here and go to black. And I'm just going to kind of fade that color out a little bit. Just so it's not so strong. So you keep inside her. And so there it is. And what's even cool here, we can go with a marquee tool. This elliptical we can come on over here and i'm going to go to there and we're going to click right here and we're going to bring that out and make a circle with it let's bring that down let's come up to our top layer and let's stroke it and let's stroke it with a very strong blue or an aqua we'll go about right in here and we're going to do edit and i'm going to do stroke and we're going to do two. We're going to say, okay. You make this look go. so easy, Woody. Well, it is easy once you get feeling with it. You know, these brushes just add so much. And, you know, you're looking at one fine art brush and two powder brushes here. And, uh, again, there's a whole selection of them. Go to the Digital Photo Candy and look at them. Uh, if you're not a member, become a member because you'll get 50% off all your brushes. So look into that as well. But these brushes will make your life so easy. I, I promise you, you're, you're, you're going to love them. And Chris, if you don't mind, I'm just going to show a few images. Yeah, absolutely. Would that be all right? Yeah. So One nice thing about that uh, the image that we were looking at um, is that you didn't have to do a perfect extraction on the hair, too, because you're masking it away. So you can oh, probably yeah. use some of the uh, the nice tools like the background removal tool to uh, get your subject out um, even easier and then just clean it up with some of these uh, creative brushes, huh? That is so true. I, I use the quick selection tool here. And because I know I'm going to be masking it with these brushes, you know, a lot of it is let me just disable that a lot of it is just boom you know you can see the grays in here and everything else but because i'm bringing in that with the masking it just comes in and starts breaking that up and, and really making it work and then if i need to i can go in there and clean it up so yeah it helps quite a bit 
quite a bit. Okay, so we were talking about this. I'm going to go to my new images. And people, this is done mostly this year. And so, uh, Dennis, if you're looking, I hope there's no competition prints in here uh, in this section. Now, I got print comps. You can see here, I've done it every year. So, I'm not going to do that. But you can see, you know, here's just some of like the backgrounds that I create with that doing different type of brushwork and different type of brushes. You know, it's just, again, doesn't matter what, it's just different type of brushes working with it and just keeps going. This is something that I did with Chris when he and I first met. He was in a play for 1984, I think it was the name of it. Is that correct, Chris? Very good, yeah. Yeah, and, and so we, we did this here. These were the actual actors that were in here, which is cool. Um, I use them on almost everything. I got sunbeams. I use them on almost every image that I do. I'm, I'm using some type of brushwork to it. And I'm just going randomly here. You know, uh, there's like the finished piece of that one. I'm just, again, we're playing with this. You know, I added all the fog images to it. It just, it goes on and on, no matter what it is. Boom. There's the same style that we've just been doing. Um, here's some of the sports. You know, this is one of the sports balls. And then just boom, put the sports people behind it. Um, same thing, you know, it's just, what are you adding to it? You know, here, here's a bear that I was playing with black and white. There it is in color. And it's just, it's man, it's a lot a of, a little fun. bit of atmosphere. Just add some depth to it. Oh yeah. I, just, I love that. This one uses the exact same, uh, process that you just showed to all of us, right? Exactly. And it has, it's even got the same fine art brushes in it. And then it's got a splatter brush, you know, um, again, you, you said about adding atmosphere, you know, th this, th there was no fog on this day. The clouds were there. I'll give it that, but no fog on there. And then same thing here, <clears throat> you know, the background was just this solid little lake line. And then I add the fog and everything to come in there. Same thing with this guy, you know, it's just, it's boom. What do you want to do? You know, um, same, this is done with the pixel. Uh, brushes and yeah, it's just so much that you can bring into that to get that punch going. Um, it's so unique. You know, this it's is got just a lot a, of impact. Yeah, these are just little mind games I play with myself when I'm creating images. You know, even this, you know, you look at that fog being stretched across that horizon line. You know, um, this was a competition print that did very, very well. And I got sunbeams coming in here. I added the lights. I added the fog. If you look right here, this is my Harley. Well, don't do it that way, Woody. I didn't mean to do that. Excuse me. But if you look right there, that was my Harley brush that I used in that. I know we're getting to it. Almost there. We're almost there. There it is. But right here is the tailpiece of my Harley brush. And there's the fog of it. I don't know who this character is. You know, he's about <laughs> the other person I did. He's a fog brush on. Uh, but yeah. Look way and, too scary, buddy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just, I, I do a lot of brushes. This was an image that was competition for last year, and I'm still working on it. It scored very, very well, but I'm not done with it for me uh, that I'm still playing with. But yeah, you know, a lot of fog brushes, a lot of lightning brushes. Um and accents and so on so yeah you play with them you know and same thing boom you look at all the stardust images and it just it gives me tools it doesn't make the image it just enhances the image and it enables me to do the storytelling to the point of what i want to do with it and that's what makes it so much fun and so chris i think if we want to uh do we have questions of any kind yeah, we do have some questions. Um, do you want to stop sharing your screen, Woody? Um, that sure. way we can actually see you and uh, we'll come up and we'll get into uh, questions. So I'm going to switch this up here. Um, if you do have questions, please pop over to that questions tab too. Uh, we're going to start going through them. Um, so first question from Nancy. Um, does the student have set cover all photoshops? Um, she's still working on CS3, wants to know if it'll work. Um, they should be 2,500 pixels. So yes, it should work in your Photoshop as well. If it doesn't, give me a call and let me give you my number right now. Chris, I'm not seeing the icon for, hang on. 
Yep, you can put it into a, a chat there. Sure. But yes, Nancy, they they are um, set up to work in all versions of Photoshop, including Photoshop Elements. Uh, yeah. So you're set on that front. Um, so uh, next question, uh, and we've got uh, from Rob. Um, is there a special setting to keep the brush preview window open? Mine seems to close every time I click back on the picture. Whoa. If I'm understanding your question correctly, seeing the actual brush tip is that what he's I, asking I, I think we're looking at like the the window and then brush properties okay um and is, if that's not staying up um that means something e yep he's saying yes <laughs> rob saying yes the brush properties window that should be staying up unless you're manually closing it out um, sure it, should. it could be that you've got something else that's um going over the screen um like if you're using a mac and you've got multiple windows open so that that uh, window is going back behind something um, but if you've got the uh, the brush properties window, that should be staying open. Absolutely. Um, so going on, next question from Dwayne. Uh, do you print the 2020 by 24 and display it when they come into the studio? I have. Um, and every time I have, I've sold it. But it's a lot of legwork uh, on my behalf when I was doing that. So most of the time I did it with projection. If it was a super if i wanted to go big big with it like 60 inches then i would print it up because if they didn't use it i was going to use it for my wall and, and you know my display prints for my selling but um yeah if, if i wanted it big big i would print it and a lot of times and again i tip my hat to aci i love printing on mental metal prints you can see this print behind me and let me get my fat butt out of the way you know that's a 60 inch print and I just love printing on gloss metal. And then I use the, like the clear white coat and, you know, ACI just does a bang out job with that. So I highly recommend, you know, printing on metal. I highly recommend ACI for doing that. Um, yeah. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah, I, I don't do spec work very often or uh, printing it unless I am okay using it as a studio sample. It is super effective sales technique uh, because if you have it there in hand, you can take it home with you today if you pay for it. Uh, that's right. pretty effective. But and, uh, this is nice too. and what's that, Woody? I said, this is nice too. Well, here's a 20 inch print. Now, which would you rather have? You know, <laughs> that works as well. But it, like Chris said, you know, that can get quite expensive too. That metal print back there is not cheap. Um, and so, yeah, be darn sure that if they don't buy it, you're still going to be able to, to use it to, to make you, you know, money. Uh, next question from Dempsey. Um, when you were creating that uh, marquee around the girl, did you click on her and to get the circle to go around her? Or uh, I think she's asking how you got the expanding marquee from clicking on the center of the girl. Yeah, just get your elliptical tool. And I just held down the alt and the shift. I clicked right in the middle and just dragged it. And it will give you a perfect circle. And then once I got my circle, being in the marquee tool, I put my cursor in the middle because you're in the marquee tool. And I dragged the circle exactly where I want it to be. Yep. So the, the alt allows you to expand it from the inside out. And the shift keeps it proportional. Um, so the combination of those two keys takes care of that. Uh, next question we have from Marla. Um, in competition, do the images you're working with have to be from the current year? I have some from a few years ago I want to work on, but won't bother for competition if that's a no. No. Oh, and then right below it, Dennis, uh, who's a uh, PPA affiliate judge, uh, answered that for us and said there's no time restrictions. <laughs> good. because oh, Thank you, Dennis, because I thought there was. Um, and so good. I'm glad you answered that. As long as I think the thing is, is, you know, it's your work. That that's the main thing that, that the judges are caring about is that it's your work. Yeah, you want to make sure that uh, you're doing it, putting your best foot forward on there. Um, exactly. So, um, and uh, yes, common a common question with using like um, elements like these or brushes or things like that. Can you use it in competition images? And yes, you can use these in competition images. You just want to make sure that um, you're putting them in and um, showing the guide images. If you are using elements you did not create in Photoshop. Uh, so that's another creative category that you can do that. Yeah. 
Yep. Oh, and looks like Don McGregor uh, has a, a comment too, um, that as long as it's not been accepted into prior competition of PPA, you can enter previous work. But if you've submitted it and you've gotten a score on it or it merited, uh, then you are not allowed to uh, submit that. Uh, any other questions? We're getting pretty close to the end of this one. I've got some exciting stuff to share with you guys. Uh, so now's the last chance to uh, um, ask questions that you have. Uh, make sure that you're putting them into that questions chat. Um, so we'll give that just a, a second more, uh, but I'm going to share my screen one more time. Come up here. Let's get that one coming up. There we go. Okay. So uh, if you do want to connect with Woody, because, uh, well, why wouldn't you want to connect with Woody? Uh, he's right. definitely a character, a lot of fun. Um, he does have three ways that we can do that. Um, so first one is looking at the Learn Photoshop with Woody Walters. Um, I just activated a uh, thing so you can have a direct link to the Facebook group. If you click that, um, just hit the uh, the join button and Woody posts a whole bunch of Photoshop tips and stuff inside of there. So we're wanting to check that out. Um, also going to uh, put in a link to inside Woody's world. So if you are interested in getting a discounts, a 50% discount on all the brushes, as well as um, getting private mentorship with him and joining a group uh, where you can improve your photography and Photoshop skills, then click that button and you can learn more about it. Uh, costs, what it takes to do it and what you get out of it because there's a whole bunch of benefits on there because well, Woody's one of those guys that gives his whole heart on there. Awesome. And um, then I do want to kind of highlight this, that uh, in the Digital Photo Candy store, so uh, the main one, um, what he is doing a 20% off um, for everybody that's watching live. Uh, you do have to click over on that uh, uh, little gift icon, though, to get the special code that's there. Because again, that's for anybody that's watching and is registered for this webinar, uh, but not for those that are watching the replay. So make sure that uh, you're getting that special code. And yes, I'll email it to you too. So you don't have to uh, worry about it if we're having technical issues trying to find it. Uh, but you can go to the digitalphotocandy.com website, and then we'll be able to uh, get our discount that's there. So um, all three of those things, uh, links are in the sidebar um, or in our chat icon so that you can find them. Um, I'm going to pop over chat, make sure that we're uh, doing here. Nope, people giving you raves and reviews on there. Uh, oh, Marla wants to know how long the discount will be available. Um, that's for two weeks until the 26th um, is how long that discount's um, open and live. Uh, so next one I got to talk about, and uh, we were talking about this earlier, Woody, but uh, um, ACI is putting up metal prints um, on sale as well. And this is uh, a special thing for those that are watching us live. So, yep, same routine. The uh, special code that you have to use is in the uh, gift section. Um, so you can get that. But you can actually get your metal prints. And they look absolutely gorgeous. I know that's your preferred medium, Woody. That's my preferred medium. Uh, they just look ridiculously good. Um, and so you can get a, uh, a deal on getting some of those samples. Maybe you're going to do some spec work and you want to get them printed out and um, sell them to your clients as they're coming in. Either way, make sure you're using that code and that expires in two weeks. So the 26th, which is a Wednesday and the next episode. Uh, so that's coming up there. Um, I'm going to peek into the uh, um, questions real quick. Looks like we got one more. Uh, oh, Dempsey wants to know, do you get signed releases from everybody? Um, it, yes, I tried to get signed releases. I got sued in my Florida book for photographing a guy that was, um, outside of a bar and he had this girl in his lap. It was, a, it was a motorcycle gang and they were sitting on a park bench and it turned out that it wasn't his wife. When the book got published, she saw it and divorced him. He tried to sue me for mental something because uh. I got him divorced and I didn't have a signed release and I had to fly from Iowa back to Florida to fight this. And so, yes, get signed releases. You know, he quote unquote was in a public place. And so I had to write as far as photojournalism to be photographing people, you know, without a release, but because I didn't get a release, I, I, I lost. And so it can be a bad thing to do. So we ended up paying him off for that. But yeah, get releases for everything you do. I've been sloppy at times and not done that. And it's bitten me in the rear end. I would say another word, but there's, you know, little kids out there that that and it's cost me. So get get releases. I use an app for uh, handling my releases that works on the iPad or it works on your cell phone. 
Um, it's easy model release is what I use. I think it was like $10 or so, maybe 15. Uh, but it's amazing to be able to have a release that's in your pocket. You can fill it out and then you just hit uh, send PDF and it emails both you and the model um, exactly the, what the release is. And it comes with the, the verbiage pre-installed on it too, uh, which is kind of handy. Or you can customize it to your own. Um, that, that's good stuff. That uh, was easymodelrelease.com. All right, excuse me, not not the .com. Easy Model Release is the name of the app inside the App Store. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what their website is. It's on there. We so, get so drained saying .com. I know, right? Well, we've got some prizes to give away too. We're just about at the end of our time. So uh, up first, we've got a swag pack. Uh, that's Amber from ACI. She is like the superstar in the uh, comments here, can answer any questions you have about ACI. But that's her smiling face there. Uh, but we've got the swag giveaway. Um, and so this one is going to go to, I love this little thing. That's pretty creative, Chris. Isn't that fun? Let's see yeah, who wins the swag. And we've got Mallory. All right, Mallory. So uh, Mallory, you make sure. You gave me all your swag. Uh, Mallory, make sure that you are um, emailing me so that we can see what size you want for your swag pack. Um, so make sure we're doing that. Um, up next, we've got a 16 by 20 metal uh, coming from ACI. Um, this does not have to. This is not Woody's image that's on there. <laughs> He's not that generous giving that away. But uh, you can have one of your own images put up on a medal uh, from ACI. So let's see who the winner of the medal is. And it's Lisa. And uh, Lisa's actually going to be our uh, presenter for next week. So we're going to be uh, talking about pet photography, uh, which should be pretty right, exciting. Lisa. And now we've got a combo where we've got some swag that's going out at you. And we've got a medal. So let's see who's winning this one. And it's Carissa. Uh, she's in Washington. That's cool. Yeah, congratulations, Carissa. Make sure that you're um, reaching out so that uh, we can make sure that you're getting that, that I know the sizes that you want, and uh, we get all hooked up with everything that's happening um, so that we can get uh, the colors and all of that fun stuff that you want. So just uh, email me. Um, as we've got that one coming up. So a couple of announcements of future episodes that are coming up. So uh, we just met uh, the winner of that last medal, uh, Lisa Asp. She's going to be doing How to Talk Dog. Uh, so this is Lisa from the Animal Image Makers. Uh, she's going to be sharing her wisdom and guidance when it comes to pet photography. Um, so that should be a really, really cool episode. Uh, we've incredible. also got Michael Mowbray coming up, looking at LED lights. Um, so you can get the skinny in terms of how LED lights work, which ones are good, what to look for in that, um, and some creative uses for it. And uh, we've also got Kimberly coming up on uh, events beyond weddings. Um, so she kind of puts a twist on doing the events, uses technology, uh, does some like Zoom broadcasting and stuff. So she'll be guiding us through how you can make more money, especially in the uh, pandemic uh, that we're in right now and coming up with some creative things. Um, if you do want to register for any of these, you can go to the same spot that you registered for this webinar. That's um, acilab.com uh, slash let's dash develop. Amber just put a link for us uh, right in there so that uh, we can get um, registered for that. You do have to register for each webinar separately. And there's little buttons that you can see which one you're going for. Uh, so kind of exciting that we have on that front. And we're just about out of time. So I got one more thing uh, that this is um, content for you guys. So if you have a subject that you want to learn about, uh, if you have a speaker that you want to hear from, somebody you think would be absolutely amazing, um, or you just want to send me funny pictures and memes, uh, my email address is hello at cwoolly.com. Uh, shoot me an email there and uh, I'll be able to uh, uh, start working on that and get more creative content with you guys working with ACI uh, to make this happen. 
Um, so I think we are officially out of time. Do we have any more questions? Oh, uh, Kathy wants to know if we can get a continuing education certificate uh, for this. Uh, unfortunately, this is not part of the PPA's education program, uh, but on the plus side, you're not being charged $100 for it either. So uh, <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, take it what you will. I just want to take a second and thank everybody for participating and, and logging on. I hope it helped. And it's such an honor to be a, you know, able to share knowledge and be a part of your photography, Chris. As always, brother, thank you. Woody, it was a pleasure as always doing this. Uh, we had a ton of fun. We learned some amazing Photoshop skills and uh, we got to look at some cool stuff <laughs> and see some fun people in the chat comments. So in two weeks, guys, uh, that's when we have our next episode with Lisa. Make sure you're going ahead and uh, registering for that. And I'm gonna shoot you an email that has all the links and codes and stuff in it as well that we've done. So in case you didn't get that written down, you've got it in an easy to access spot. <laughs> All right. Have a good night, guys. Good night, people.